I've only got about 10 seconds to introduce this video on creating a stylized countdown in Cavalry to all you good people. So what I'd like to do is start off by saying, how are you doing? No, how are you really doing? Let's start off by alt clicking the T to get some text in there. And then let's center it in the horizontal and the vertical by clicking these two buttons. And the next thing I want to do is click this plus sign. This gives a string generator. And what is that? It's a generator of random letters and numbers here, but we have options. If we click this, we have uh, stuff like time code and we also have this value or if you're just a random number kind of person you got that option there so i'm going to go with the value i'm also going to reduce my precision to get rid of the decimals and the padding to get rid of the yeah, numbers at the left and now we just got a single digit so what i'm going to do is click the corner and hold down shift to scale that up and we've got a zero that does nothing and let's change this to a nine that does nothing and isn't that better? So what I want to do is click the click the keyframe button there. And let's say we want this countdown to be 100 frames. It could be whatever you want it to be. So at 100 frames, let's change this to zero. And I'm going to change my playback range here. And I'm going to do a quick preview just to see how this works. So one thing you'll notice is it's counting down and it looks right, except for the fact that the nine goes really fast. Well, it actually goes half the speed. Uh, it shows half the speed of the other one. So you'll see after six frames, it switches and the eight goes from frame six to frame um, 17 or 16. So what's going on is if we look at this number, it's rounding off. So if we look at this number here, it stays at nine until it gets below 8.5. So it's rounding up. And you can see now when we're below 8.5, it switches to eight. So this first number is half the length of all the other ones. So what I'll do is just take these and drag them over and I could see, okay, the nine goes for about five or six frames. So I'll just move that over to compensate. And then if I play this back, it should be equal to all the other numbers. So now the nine is equal to all the numbers, but we still have the matter of zero only starting at 0 0.5. So we need to give this an extra six frames or so. So that's great, but let's try and make this look a little bit more interesting. So if I alt click on this circle, wouldn't you know it, you get a circle right in the middle of your screen. And I'm going to click this button here. I got swatches you might not have, but you could click this arrow, find swatches, pick a color that you like. And uh, now we've got this circle. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller by clicking the corner and holding down shift and dragging it. So now we've got a, a circle an ellipse technically that's completely round, but I'm gonna press control D and now I have a, a duplicate copy and I'm gonna bring my copy over a bit here and give it a different color. Now what I wanna do is get kind of an extruded effect. So if I hit this plus sign and click this all tab and start typing C-O-N-V-E convex hull, we got it. So we press enter and now we just have to click here to make that window go away. So we've got a convex hull, but it's not doing anything because if I alt double click, you could see that it wants to be fed some inputs. This is a hungry hull. So let's drag this dot for my ellipse copy onto this input and let's drag the ellipse shape one on here. And now you can see we got something. So my convex hull, which is gray, is covering everything. I would like it to cover one thing. So I'm gonna click and drag this down here. And now I could see if I turn it off, I still have that shape here, this ellipse shape one, this orange shape, but it's gonna be completely covered. So let's make it invisible and let's turn back on our convex hull. And you could see now, um, let me just change its color to something. Actually, I need to select it. That would make sense. Okay, so now I can move this and this is my ellipse one. I'm gonna undo that because I don't want that far of a extrusion. And even though this one is invisible, I could still click on it and I could still select and move it. Now I don't wanna move the hull cause that's gonna destroy the entire effect. So once I've got it colored the right color, I could lock it down and now I could move this shape or I can move this shape, but you see you can't select an invisible shape unless you click on it 
down here, which is kind of the way you would want to go because most time you're not going to want to move invisible stuff. But it's nice to know that you have the option to move this shape even though we don't see it and get different extrusion effects. So we've got a few different things and we can group them all together. Control G and we can collapse this group. We could also click on it, press enter. Well, let's call it C Y L that'll be for cylinder. And now what I'm going to do is make a bunch of copies of this cylinder and spread them around this shape here, the, the number. So to do that, what I'm going to do is select it and hit this button here creates a duplicator and now you've got a, a bunch of these and what i'm going to do is change the type so alt double click on duplicator and we go from grid to voxelize and now we don't see anything but we need to take this text and i'll just collapse this here takes take the text drag it onto the input shape and now we've got something it's not exactly what we're looking for but it is something and if i go into the shape uh, scale shape scale click and drag this x to this y so now i could constrain just by dragging the x value and i will hold down shift to limit my amount and i could drag this down and uh, get it to a point where it looks like something that i want and I'm also going to hide this text. And now we can see, uh, we can also go in here and I'm going to click this and I'm going to change its color, maybe something like that. I'm going to try and select the hull, but remember we've locked it. So if you need to get back to it, just unlock it. And now we could change its color, some kind of result like this. And then once we get all that, we could lock this again. We could collapse this cylinder layer. We can hide it. And uh, we've got this shape now that will update with the numbers. Let's see if we could add a little variation here. So what I'm going to do is create a rectangle. I'm just going to alt click and you could do the convex hole type thing, but I'm just going to do a really simple shape here. And what I want to do is go to my duplicator by alt clicking on it and focusing on it here. And you can see input shapes, meaning plural so we could add more than one shape and I'm going to drag my rectangle in here and now we're going to have two shapes we're looking at the first one which is labeled zero but if I type one in here you can see now we've got these rectangles which we don't really want that right now and what I want is to stagger this number or um, use an oscillator with a stagger value so let's do that now I'm going to right click in here and go to add behavior oscillator and now I could find it here or I could just click on this little arrow and I'll see that thing that I just added which is this oscillator and I just have to double click on it and now I see the values up here so we know the zero is the cylinder and one is the rectangle we want our minimum and maximum to be zero and one and we also want to stagger this value so as i bring this up here you kind of see it's um, staggering the values and if we play this you'll see that this is being animated on i also have this original shape here i don't need to see it so let's turn the rectangle off at least for now and deselect it okay so this is um this is the result we can look at the uh the frequency how frequently we want these to alternate so let's set this back and um, what i want to do is also make this a little bit more interesting so i got the um the gray colors here which are not quite interesting but i'm gonna turn the rectangle actually back on for now and let's find a number with a a hole in it like zero so we can see this more clearly so what i'm going to do is hit this plus sign and start typing i and d e x then we have this index to color i'll press enter or i'll double click to add it and now we have this index to color and we want to connect it to this shape here so let's alt double click with this highlighted so now we see okay this is our fill color here is our index to color Let's drop this onto our fill. 
and this gives us this gradient look. And now let's uh, alt double click on the index to color and we can click this, we can make this. Uh, let's, let's go with something, how about something in the yellow range here? Make it a little bit darker and we can make this, uh, maybe something in the reds. I don't know, we can try and get this to look right or at least match up a little bit. So we got this gradient so I could take this shape and I could move it and you can see it's not moving any of the, the duplications here. But if I want, what I can do is I'll double click on this and go to deformers and I'm going to create a manipulator. And now I could click this arrow, then double click the manipulator. And what I'm going to do is rotate it. And now if I rotate the manipulator, you'll see, let's just type in 45 degrees. So now the shape will move and well, it'll rotate, it'll move too, but I don't really want this to move cause that's going to offset things. Uh, so what I can do is I could scale it. So I'm going to click the X, drag it to the Y. So these two are connected and I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller and okay. So now we've got a little variation in color. We've added this manipulator and um, we should just play this to see how it's looking. Well, we should hide this shape here. So I just click on it here so I could see where it is in the list. I can turn the eyeball off and I can start collapsing some of these layers. I could also take this index to color and dump it in here just so it's one less thing to look at. And now let's play, let's zoom out here too. And then let's play and see what kind of look we have. So that's our shape and it's a fairly interesting design. We, we can always go back and make any changes to, to really anything we want. If I find the cylinder and okay, this is something that I should note. I'm going to turn the eyeball on. I've got the group selected and I'm going to move it. And you can see when I move the group, I've kind of got like a double transformation. So I got like two movements on the, uh, the uh, convex hole or or something like that i don't know exactly what's going on but it looks like kind of a double transformation so i want to avoid doing that this is a kind of a complex setup but what i can do is select the original ellipse and i could say you know what maybe i like it better in this direction or i want it to be extruded way way out something like that so you have that option you could scale this and i'm going to hold on shift as i do if you want like a candy corn type of look. You can also click on the original, not the original, the, the behind shape for the convex hole. You can move that out. Or you can make them really close to each other. So a lot of flexibility and just make sure you don't move this entire group or else it's going to kind of come apart like that, which you don't want. Okay. So that is how you could create an interesting looking countdown.